Hello again, welcome back to the lab. Today I'm going to show off these single line self scan displays. These appear to be Burroughs first product like this and as such the construction of it is quite a bit different than the newer models. And we'll all be taking a look at how these work inside and look at the circuit boards and what the glass itself looks like. So as you can see I got this one already hooked up and running and it's just showing a message. This is a 32 character display and it has that same 64 character font so it's uppercase only, some symbols, no lowercase at all. Here's a shot of the lash up yet again that pick board then the display itself, the power supply in the back is powering it like usual and then I've got a connector here that I labeled because if that connector gets flipped over it will totally fry that display by applying 250 volts to a logic input and that wouldn't be good. So here's half of the font. This is characters 20 through 3F hex. This is characters 40 hex through 5F hex. Then this is the much larger 16 character display. So the characters are quite a bit taller on here and of course much larger so it makes it easier to read if you don't need that many characters and the font is exactly the same as on the other display it's just quite a bit bigger. So there it is zoomed in a little bit more. I won't really bother putting the magnifying glass on there and showing the individual pixels because they look exactly like on that eight line display I already posted the video on. Well these Burroughs displays they seem to come in groups of four. I had four of those six line units and I have four of these one line units. And this is the one I got for two bucks at the Ham Fest a month ago. This one is brand spanking new. This one's brand spanking new and this one's brand spanking new. This one's kind of used and the corner's cracked but it does work. But one of the chips was bad when I got it so the display itself didn't actually function. It kind of got stuck halfway scanning. So what this chip is, this is a proprietary Signetics TTL part and to make a regular chip work I, buy, I had to bodge it on with wires. I've been trying to find the actual chip itself so I can do a proper job repair but I so far haven't been successful. Interestingly the 16 character and the 32 character displays have identical circuit boards except there's a few jumper changes and the memory chip is a different size. This one has a 6-bit by 16 deep FIFO shift register memory, and this is a 32 deep. So what they do, they circulate the data around and around and around in the shift register, and as it gets circulated through, it actually displays it on the screen at the same time. So that keeps it refreshed and keeps it in memory. This memory works exactly like it did on that 8-line display where you have to wait your turn to poke data into it. So as it's scanning across the display here, it is actually waiting for the proper character to drop it into that slot and replace the data that came out of the end of the shift register. So that does it for basically this display. So now the next step will be to take this board off and see what makes it tick. By taking out the four screws in the corner, these circuit boards just come right off and you can unplug it from the display itself and we'll look at this in a little more detail later. I have one of these that's taken apart already. These simple one line displays only have three groups of electrodes for the scanning and it just goes one, two, three, one, two, three, kind of like a stepper motor. You theoretically could actually cause the glow to shift backwards and forwards but they only shift left to right of course. So there's a reset output that brings the glow back to the left side and then the three just go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three to shift the glow across the display and change the data as it goes. And as before, this is our character ROM. It is just a MK2301 like before and then there's four, five, six, seven outputs and these outputs drive those anode wires and it's just a high voltage transistor. There's really not a lot to it. Then this is just a JK flip-flop and I can't remember what that other chip was and that just does that divide by three functionality and then why they chose to hook the boards together with wires I don't know it's kind of stupid but that's what they did now on the bottom board this is like the timing board and here's that memory chip it's a uh, 2518 made by Signetics and that is should be a 6-bit by 16 deep FIFO memory 
then there's basically some counters, a whole bunch of XOR gates, and then a little crystal over there. That's a 4 megahertz crystal like on the other one. And then all these custom Burroughs Mark chips that I know all the part numbers too. I actually drew the schematic for this out, but I don't know where it went, unfortunately. I've been looking for it and I can't find it. So I like the little round transistor they got there and some resistors and caps. They did a lot of like edge triggered mono stable type things on here to save chips. So basically the only difference between this and the 32 character version is this jumper here is moved over there and then this FIFO chip is replaced with a 32 by 6 bit one. This is a 16 by 6 bit and that is pretty much the only changes. All the pinouts and everything all are exactly identical. So basically the way this interface works is there's a 6 bit ASCII value. There's a right signal, a done signal, and a clear signal. If you pull that clear signal low, it'll blank the display and return the right position to the very first character at the left side. And when you power this up, you must clear it or else it will not work properly. And then the next signal is the right signal. And you put your 6-bit ASCII code on this connector, pull that right signal low, and then there'll be a done signal. So you wait for that to go high, then you bring your right signal high again, and, you're, and that's it. And you just repeat that for every character you wish to write. Also, you have to supply 5 volts at a half an amp, negative 12 at 50 milliamps, and then 250 volts at, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 milliamps, and then this thing should work. The only thing left now is the display glass itself, and here it is. This is one with the bezel removed and the filter removed. And it's very similar to that eight line display. It's got seven wires that go across this time. There's another seven on the back side for that scanning glow. And you can see those wires actually terminate right here to this to this header here. You can actually see that. And then this is just black tape, and you can see where they've actually connected the electrodes together in groups of three there so there's so there's one connection here and what they've done is they've taken every third electrode they welded them together and bent them under the glass and this foam is holding them in place on the other side over here they've connected every third electrode again and you can actually see where they've they've welded those all together here and then there's the third set is bent underneath this side of the glass and then welded together so that's how they're getting their groups of three and then this is just some black like electrical tape that just covers that so you don't see it and then this end is kind of hard to see but you can see those wires exiting from inside the glass now and you can actually see the end of the other seven wires which is pretty neat and kind of, kind of get a idea for the depth that those little holes are where the pixels appear this one's got some brutal burn in. That's why there's two little columns that look a lot brighter than the rest because those never had any pixels lit up in them. So I got this display out of a very old typesetting machine I got to take apart when I was about 18. And this is very old, 1973 or thereabouts. The chip date says 73 anyway. And it appears to have been well used and obviously being a dumb kid I didn't know how this worked and this did have the two display boards on them and the bottom board has been lost but the top board's still here so what I did I took the character font ROM off of there and I undid all those wires and I fixed this up so this is like the other model of display they make that you had to drive yourself so eventually when I get a 12 pin connector for this I will hook this up to pick and actually make it work again and this display does work I've actually fired it up with one of those other boards and it does function but this will let me light up every pixel along the row and maybe do a little some graphics or something that might look really neat. So we'll see. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment and subscribe. It really helps.